Hey everyone, how you doing? Well, as you can see from the title of this video, I'm doing another one in my little power pop series, so to speak. Every once in a while I like to feature a highlight, one of the other bands besides the Beatles that I've been getting into since I was very young, or at least a teenager. And uh, one of them happens to be The Knack. Get The Knack, okay? Uh, the reason I came up with The Knack is my next one is I did a little online poll not too long ago where I put three bands up there, one being The Knack, and asked the uh, viewers out there or my subscribers to vote as to which band or artist they'd like me to feature next in the power pop realm. And The Knack won handily over the other two artists, so I uh, decided to do a little video on The Knack. Uh, I don't think I've ever done a dedicated video on the Knack, and I don't see too many videos out there about the Knack. And uh, I thought, why not? You know, they need to get a little love. We need to spread a little love their way because they do deserve it. They are a great band, or were a great band, I should say. And uh, it's they're funny, the Knack. They're one of these bands that evokes a lot of emotion. Uh, you just say to someone, what do you think of the Knack? Uh, and a lot of people out there would go, who? <laughs> But people up in my age category or most rock and roll and power pop fans know who the Knack were. And when you ask them, what do you think of the Knack? You get one of two answers. Either some people will say, uh, oh, love the Knack. They were a great band, great rock and roll band, great power pop band, love a lot of their songs. Or you'll get people to say, oh, the Knack. You know, they give you that snide, ah, oh, the Knack, they stink. They were just some throwaway band from the late 70s, early 80s. It runs the gamut, folks. Some people love the Knack. Some people can't stand the Knack. <laughs> some people are kind of in the middle and have no thought about it whatsoever. But regardless of what your thought is about them, hear me out today. Let me say a few things about them. And maybe if you check out a little bit of their music, uh, I'm hoping that I have a little bit of an influence on you to give them a try and see that they're a lot more than what their image was projected as back in the day and that in fact they are a very quality band and their material is well written well performed and it's fun to listen to and it's great music that's just my opinion now the knack were formed in southern california in the late 70s around 1978 <clears throat> they got together and I think they performed their first gig around June of 1978 in Southern California in the L.A. clubs. And uh, they consisted of four members, uh, Doug Figer on mainly lead vocals and rhythm guitar. You had Burton Aver on lead guitar and background vocals. You had Prescott Niles on bass guitar and background vocals. And you had Bruce Gary on drums. They came out of the box playing the L.A. clubs and they were a big hit, folks. Uh, whether it was backlash to disco, backlash towards 70s, kind of laid-back country rock, uh, yacht rock, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but people just were ready for something new, something fresh, two-and-a-half, three-minute pop songs, power pop, Beatlesque music. People were in the mood for that. People really needed that. I know I was. I mean, I've got nothing against the major big acts from the early to mid 70s coming into the late 70s uh you know i love fleetwood mac i like the eagles and and all those bands but i'm telling you that music's good and maybe people out there find a lot of passion in it and, and that's great and i have nothing against it but i'm sorry for me i need i need beatlesque rock i need power pop i need music that has harmonies power chords great guitar solos two and a half three minutes long in and out you know, just that's the kind of music I love. I'm just a power pop and Beatles guy, and that's the way it's going to be. Cheap Trick, The Knack, you know, uh, Bad Finger, Raspberries. That, that's my music. That's the music I love. The Ramones. I just love music like that. And The Knack fall into that category. They are a power pop band, uh, a rock and roll band. And um, as I said, when they came out in, in 78, they caused a big steer. Um, they had big celebrities showing up to some of their shows. The word was getting out that this new band was out there and they were really kicking it and rocking and, and playing that old style music we all love from the 60s, only bringing it up into the late 70s period. And uh, they had guests like Stephen Stills showing up to their shows. They had Bruce Springsteen getting up on stage with them. 
uh, Robbie Krieger from The Doors, Ray Manzarek from The Doors, oh my gosh, uh, Eddie Money uh, hooked up with them in, in those early shows in 78, early 79, and they, they were a big rage with people and with the celebrity crowd, with the musical artists who were big at the time were into the knack. Everybody was getting the knack, so to speak. And, of course, about a year after they formed and performed their first shows is when their first album came out, which is called Get the Knack. I'm going to show a couple of pieces of vinyl. I do have the vinyl of Get the Knack also. Well, I'll show the CD for now. Get the Knack came out in June of 1979, and this was a smash, folks. Any of you that know music from back in that day, you know that this album was huge. It sold in the millions. The single my Sharona, which you all know and love, I'm sure, sold. It went number one for like six weeks. It was a, probably the song of the year, or at least the summer of 1979. And it just, this album exploded, folks. It absolutely exploded. I'll show you the inside. And millions sold, sold out shows. They headlined at Carnegie Hall. And I'm going to show you a DVD of Carnegie Hall in a minute. And I'll tell you, folks. This band was just on top of the world for a period of time. Uh, for a good six to eight months, maybe nine months, a little under a year, they were they were top of the world, top of the heap, you know, top of the world, Ma. You know, they were there. The knack was there. Uh, they were poised to be huge, big. And again, not wanting this video to take too long, but I, I won't go into all the details. But a series of bad decisions, both by the band. By their management um, really hurt the band you know who rose to the top so quick with this album such a smash and to crash so quickly within a year they were just considered passe and their records weren't selling it's just a travesty a tragedy because they were worth so much more than that they were so uh, such a, a, a better band than that to be or an artist than that to be to have that happen to them and part of it has to be blamed on the band, like I said, but a lot of it was management decisions, bad decisions. Um, they were invited to play the Grammys in 1980, and their management turned it down. I mean, who does that? They were invited to be guest uh, performers on Saturday Night Live. The management turned it down. Again, why? Stupid. Instead, the manager had them touring in, like, you know, East Japipi, Egypt somewhere, and, 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 you know, all these outskirt places, they're out doing shows when they could have been on the Grammys and playing uh, Saturday Night Live and really building up their fan base. But again, that's just one thing. There was financial issues. There was personality issues. Um, there was the way the management had them uh, pre uh, present their persona. Uh, they were coming off as being kind of snotty and not doing interviews. And they wouldn't do interviews with media people and music people. And when they did do the rare interview, they'd be kind of snotty and snide and sarcastic. And this was all management planning and trying to create this image of them, which was totally wrong. They never should have done it. And it just ended up hurting them because obviously once the media turned on them and said, these guys are a bunch of jerks, once they started writing in that tone about them, it was all over for the knack because then the audience just went away and disappeared and and technically really never came back. And that's a shame. So anyway, um, they, they stuck around for three albums. Again, Get the Knack exploded, was huge. Here's the famous back cover, which was attributed to being kind of a tribute to the Beatles there, being the next big thing, so to speak, and they kind of got some flack over that. Um, their second album was called But the Little Girls Understand, and they didn't give it enough time. They they released this album too soon after Get the Knack. They, uh, it came out too fast. I mean, Get the Knack comes out June of 1979, and then within like eight months or so, this comes out in like January or February of 1980. I mean, they didn't give the first album enough time to percolate and to really, you know, get some more singles out and really build the fan base with this one, which was so popular and sold in the millions. They rush this one out, and it sells only like a half a million, like 500,000, and uh, it, just, it, it just was the beginning of the end for them, folks. So soon after their rise, this was the beginning of the end, and it's a shame because it's a great little album. 
it's almost like Get the Knack Pack 2. I mean, they were recorded around the same time and with the same, uh, in the same studios and everything. And it's a great little album. Not quite as good as Get the Knack, but it's right up there. It's a really good album, folks, and I recommend it. Check it out if you get a chance. Everybody knows this one, but try to explore some of their other stuff, and I really think you'll enjoy it. So they released this one in early 1980, and that's when the, the beginning of the end happened, and they start to fade. And um, as the year went on, things got worse and worse and worse. And finally, by the end of 1980, they were pretty much written off by the music press. Uh, the fans had disappeared. Like I said, the second album didn't sell that well. And they kind of went on a little mini hiatus for a while. Then in 1981, they decided to give it another go. Let's try one more. Let's they. You know, I'm not sure if they scrapped the management, but they changed their demeanors, they changed their attitude. They said, we got to start fresh again. We were given some bad advice here. Let's try to start over. And folks, they put out, they got together, got Jack Douglas, who was just fresh coming off of John Lennon's Double Fantasy, and they recorded this album. It came out in late 1981 called Round Trip. And here's my vinyl copy of Round Trip. You see autographed by Jack Douglas, the producer. And if you know uh, from watching my Fest of Beatle fans videos not too long ago, I met Jack Douglas, their Nax producer, at the uh, Fest. He signed some other albums for me, but one of them I really wanted to make sure he signed for me was the Nax Round Trip, which Jack did. This is a fabulous, fabulous album, folks. They got back together, they had their act together, and they put out one of the best albums of their career. In my opinion, this is a top album. It's highly worth your time. Get Round Trip. Try it out. If you've only heard Get the Knack, or you only heard My Sharona, or Good Girls Don't, which is also on the first album, which was a top 10 hit, Get Round Trip. I think you really enjoyed it. It's a great freestanding album. Awesome album. So... Unfortunately, though, when they released Round Trip, it didn't do well, folks. The record company, which was Capital, they're on Capital, released the first single. They picked the wrong one. They picked a, a song that's kind of a slow country-ish ballad on here called Pay the Devil, Ooh Baby Ooh. It's a good song. It's really great on this album, but it's not single material, and the album sank like a lead balloon. It just dropped. So... That was it for the Knack. They broke up in, in early 82, and they're gone. Done. You don't hear, they all do their own things for a while. Well, then many years go by, and excuse me, and they come back nearly 10 years after their breakup with a brand new album, minus Bruce Gary, the drummer. And let me just say about Bruce Gary, the original drummer of the Knack, who's on the first three albums. Fabulous drummer. May he rest in peace. He passed away about 2005 from cancer. He was only in his 50s. And uh, I can't tell you enough. If, if for anything, listen to some Knack on their first three albums and listen to Bruce Gary's drumming, you'll be amazed. He is a, one of the best rock and roll drummers of all time. He's rock and roll with a jazz flavor. So he's like the Buddy Rich of rock and roll, in my opinion. He's just so talented and so technically great as a drummer. And he's so loud and bombastic. Listen to Bruce Gary on the drums, please. You won't be sorry. But when they came back after the debacle, after a round trip, and they broke up, about nine years later, they came back in 2001. Uh, sorry, I'm off on that. They broke up in, in 1991. <laughs> sorry. In 1991, they came back with this album called Serious Fun. Okay, there's the front. There's the back. Uh, the whole band intact, except for Bruce Gary, who had by that point left. And this is a great rocking album, folks. This is probably their hardest rocking album of all. came out in 1991. It has a great single on it, which uh, was a pretty big hit on, on, on rock radio called Rocket of Fun. Rocket of, Rocket of Love. I'm sorry. Rocket of Love. Great song. Check it out when you get a chance. But they came back with this album. They toured a little bit. They got a little bit of uh, recognition and notice for it. Uh, their song, My Sharona, was selected in 1994 for the movie Reality Bites. They did that. That brought back some more fame and, and attention to the Knack and, and their talents and their skills. 
and they went on a little tour in 1994 to support that song being in Reality Bites and with this album being out there. And uh, I did see that tour and they were fantastic. I saw them in Providence, Rhode Island in 1994. Great show, fantastic. They still had it, they were still rocking. And I, I just was so happy to see that they were recording again. A few years after that, after 1991, they were still together. Uh, they switched drummers again and got uh, Dale, uh, I'm sorry, Terry Bazio from Missing Persons to be their drummer on this album, which came out in 1998 called Zoom. All right, Zoom. Show you the back. Folks, this is a good album. This is a hard rocking album, serious fun. This brought the knack back to their power pop roots. And it's fabulous. This is probably, probably one of my favorite. Na they only have six studio albums, but I say one of my favorites. I love all the Nax albums, but Zoom for their later period. If you want to consider the first three albums with Bruce Gary, their early period, and then when they reunited to do the last three albums, this is definitely my favorite of that later period. Zoom, fabulous, fabulous album, folks. Folks, I can't highly recommend it enough. I won't steer you wrong. I'm not saying go out and buy all six Nax albums. But at least check out a couple that I highly recommend, and this is one of them, Zoom. You'll really love this album. It's a fabulous, fabulous album. Isn't out on vinyl yet. The last three albums, from far as I know, are not out on vinyl, but this is a great album. So they put this out in 98. They stayed together, did some tours here and there. And then in 2001, a few years after Zoom, they came out with their final studio album, which I've never liked the cover of it. It's so kind of stupid and I think it hurt the sales of the album. It's called The Knack, Normal as the Next Guy. There's the cover. And there's the back. Not much to it. And here's the inside. There are the three members. Again, Bruce Gary's not with them at this point. They have a different drummer on this album. But uh, this is their final studio album from 2001, Normal as the Next Guy. And I do happen to have another copy of it which was signed by the late Doug Figer. Can you see that? Um, of the original four members, Bruce Gary passed away in 2005, I believe, from cancer. And Doug Figer also passed away about, I want to say, 2012. And he also died from throat cancer or some type of cancer. Um, not sure exactly, but I am cherished and happy to have this autograph from Doug Figer before he passed away. He signed a copy of their final studio album for me, so I appreciate that. A um, couple of little compilations they have that have come out over the years you can get. They did a live session from Live at the live from the Rock and Roll Funhouse album. Again, I recommend that. Great, great, great little CD. You can get many retrospectives of them. The Knack Retrospective, this is one of the first ones which came out many, many years ago, but it's got a great version of Bruce Springsteen's Don't Look Back on it, which they do a bang-up version. Here's another one, uh, Proof, The Very Best of the Knack. Great compilation, has a lot of you know unreleased stuff that's not on their albums on it. There's some early earlier releases that came out uh, in recent years. One is called Rock and Roll is Good for You, The Knack. It's the Doug Figer and Bruce Avare demos before they recorded the first album there's a bunch of demos that they recorded together so I recommend that and this one's a pretty cool one from one of their first shows live in Los Angeles 1978 the Knack having a rave up this is live at one of the clubs in LA during their early formative time period that they were together and, and, the, and a lot of these are all still available folks you can get them but I highly recommend them okay a couple of DVDs I have of the Knack is I have a fan club only issue of the Live at the Carnegie Hall concert from 1979. It's called I Want Ya, the Knack Live at Carnegie Hall. Here's the set list. Can you see that okay? They do a great version. Last song there, last encore is A Hard Day's Night. Wow, they do a fantastic job of that. A couple other covers on there also. And it's just a great, like I said, this is a uh, fan club only thing, so it's not much to it. But uh, I got this through somebody, and it's fabulous. This came out on a laser disc only 
in the early 80s and it hasn't been uh, issued since uh, so I'm so happy to have it on DVD if you want to hear the story of the knack there's a great DVD which will go into a lot more details than I could called getting the knack which you can still get and a nice one one of their final uh, shows together on stage at World Cafe Live the knack great DVD you can get that also Oh, real quick, I have an old BAM magazine I have with the knack on the cover from early 1980. I thought I'd show you that. A little ripped and beat up, but a piece of knack memorabilia you don't see too much. And that's it, folks. Um, again, get the knack. <laughs> Try them out. I'm over 20 minutes now, and I didn't want to go too long. I just want to say it's a band that is so talented. Their six studio albums and their other releases are worth it. They're great rock and roll, great power pop if you're into it check them out. And again, my favorite three albums of the Knacks is Get the Knack, the first one, skip the second one, go to the third one, Round Trip, get that one, skip the next one, and go to Zoom. Those are my three favorite Knack albums that I highly recommend to you. Get the Knack, Round Trip, and Zoom. If you get those three and listen to them, I guarantee you're going to love them. All right? So that's it, folks. Just want to spread a little love for the Knack. Uh, sad that, you know, Doug and Bruce are no longer with us and the band is pretty much defunct now. But their music lives on. They're a great little band. Uh, they've been maligned back in the day for some bad decision making. But when it comes down to the essence of the music, folks, when you just look at the music, it's there. They had the chops. They had the songs. They're a great band. Hope you enjoy this, folks. Let's give the Knack some love. Hope you will. I know I will. God bless. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.